This month on Connections. Our travels around Chicagoland began on Goose Island and a fine dining experience sure to satisfy any palate. The dining room at Kendall College is our first stop. As we make our way east on board the number 66 Chicago Avenue bus, we'll tell you what the CTA is doing to reduce the emissions of its bus fleet. Next, we board the Purple Line headed north to Evanston, where a major viaduct replacement project has just been completed. See what it means for customers. As we head back south to Howard Station, we'll transfer to the Red Line, headed to 47th Street Station. Along the way, we'll introduce you to two CTA employees whose exceptional work on the front lines helps to keep the CTA moving. From the Red Line's 47th Street Station, we're just steps from the 47th Street bus, and a route that you can travel along to experience history, unique shopping, dining, and entertainment. Finally, the 47th Street bus takes us east to Greenwood Avenue, where you'll find a gem of an educational arts facility. Little Black Pearl Workshop is our last stop. Looking to make a meaningful New Year's resolution? How about taking public transportation for all your travels in 2006? Save money, help the environment, and relax while you ride by using the CTA. Hi, I'm Dale Rivera. Welcome to Connections, where you can learn all about using the CTA in and around Chicago. In celebration of a new year and new beginnings, why not try something different? Like a fine dining experience where you can critique your meal. It's a truly unique place, and your feedback is important. At the dining room at Kendall College, our first stop. To get from his own front door to the front door of Kendall College, Chef Chris Quirk takes the CTA's Brown Line and the number 66 Chicago Avenue bus. Having lived and worked all over the country, Chris is a big fan of the CTA. I'd say Chicago's transit system is uh, as good or better than any of the transit systems I've ever used. They pretty much stop uh, within a couple of blocks of almost any place I want to go. It's actually incredibly convenient for me. Chris hops off the CTA just a few blocks away from Kendall College, where he teaches students all about the culinary arts. And you may need to split the tenderloin. Kendall College began as a liberal arts college in Evanston in 1934. Today, the college offers two and four-year degrees in culinary arts, hotel management, and early childhood education. It's ranked as one of the top culinary and baking and pastry schools in the nation. In 2005, the college moved to its new location on Goose Island. The new campus is equipped with a hotel suite, wine room, food photo lab, and 16 top-of-the-line teaching kitchens. It's a completely state-of-the-art facility, and if we train the students on this, um, obviously they have an opportunity to go out there and work in really good kitchens. You know, we try to give them the experience of being in a wonderful restaurant kitchen. And the restaurant quality kitchen comes with, you guessed it, a restaurant. The dining room at Kendall College is open to the public for lunch and dinner. It's the place where students get to experience firsthand what it's like to create, cook, and serve food to paying customers. And the customers are literally eating someone's homework. Every night is a quiz. When you put your food out every night, it gets graded by the customer. If it's not good, it comes right back. If it's good, uh, you have a wonderful experience. And they've always gotten an A for me. And they get a super A for being nice. While dining room customers are treated to flavors from all over the globe, students are taught using the French culinary system. Every day you wake up and it's like, I want to go back to class, I want to do this again and again, and, and just keep learning new things and, and opening yourself up to different things. More than 800 students are enrolled at Kendall during the year, and the college's graduates include some very famous alumni, including Blue Plate Catering Company owner Jody Fife and Chicago chefs Sean McLean, Doug Sohn, and Mindy Siegel. So if you want to experience fine dining at Kendall College, be sure to make a reservation and let the CTA take you there. Here's how.
For Chef Chris Quirk, the CTA takes him to Kendall College to a job he truly enjoys. For me, uh, being able to work in an environment where I get to work with some of the best people in the industry, on some of the best equipment in the industry, and in one of the best cities in the United States is just like plus, plus, plus. Public transit helps reduce emissions by reducing the number of cars on the road. But the CTA looks for other environmental initiatives as well, such as further reducing the emissions of its bus fleet with a new low emissions engine on its newest order of buses. It's just one more way the CTA is keeping service on the move. Public transportation is environmentally friendly. It takes thousands of cars off the road every day that would otherwise be sending emissions into the air we breathe. But the CTA takes its commitment to the environment further with a number of initiatives that make using the CTA even more earth friendly, beginning with new low emissions buses. The CTA's recent order of new flyer buses will begin arriving in 2006 and are equipped with low emission engines, which helps to lessen the impact of the CTA's fleet on the environment. In addition to the low emission buses, the CTA has included 20 diesel electric hybrid buses as part of the order. The hybrid buses will be tested for performance in Chicago's climate to determine if they are suitable for use in the CTA's fleet. A hybrid vehicle uses both diesel fuel and electric batteries to provide the energy used to power the engines. The hybrid buses use less fuel and produces lower emissions and in this climate of high fuel prices, a reduction in fuel use will help CTA's bottom line. The new flyer buses are replacing the CTA's 5300 series flexible buses that were purchased in 1991. Each new flyer bus will produce 60% fewer emissions than the 1991 bus it replaces. While those buses, the engines were upgraded over a period of time, the technology is still 1991 technology. So with the new buses, the engine will take greater advantage of the ultra-low sulfur diesel fuel that we use, and the engine runs a lot cleaner as it's you know, fully emissions compliant today. In 2003, the CTA converted its entire bus fleet to ultra-low sulfur diesel fuel, and today it's one of the primary users of ultra-low sulfur diesel in the Midwest. In less than a decade, the CTA has reduced its annual bus fleet emissions by 22%, the new flyer engines will further reduce annual emissions by 203 tons, another 10%. Certainly, I think the message to customers is, is CTA takes emissions and re emissions reductions very seriously. And as time goes, we're going to continue to explore avenues to further reduce the emissions. One future technology is fuel cells. The CTA was the first agency to experiment with fuel cell buses and a fuel cell engine is still in development. The CTA is also on track with other environmental initiatives, like rail ties made from recycled plastic. Currently, there are about 60,000 plastic ties on the CTA system that have replaced the older wooden creosote-treated ties through routine maintenance or construction projects on the blue, red, and brown lines. By replacing wooden ties with recycled plastic ties, the CTA has so far saved 12,000 trees. Also, there's about 8.4 billion pounds of plastic containers manufactured in the United States every year. What we do is we recycle that plastic and we use it for our ties. Uh, to date, we've used about 10.8 million pounds of recycled plastic. Plastic rail ties last twice as long as wooden ties, and their corrugated surface adheres better to the gravel track bed and provides better stability. So whether it's on the road or the rails, remember the CTA is always working to improve its operations to maximize customer satisfaction and minimize the impact on the environment. A complete renovation is underway at the CTA's Blue Line subway station at Jackson. The rehab of Jackson Station involves rebuilding the station's platform and mezzanine between Jackson and Van Buren and the installation of new escalators. The CTA will keep Jackson Station open throughout its renovation for Blue Line customers. To minimize inconvenience to these CTA customers, construction on the platform will be completed in stages so that only a portion of the platform will be closed at any one time, allowing for uninterrupted service 
and access to the platform. The Jackson Station project will be the first to showcase the new design theme for the Blue Line subway stations, which is similar to the design developed for the recently renovated Red Line subway stations. The renovation of Jackson Station is scheduled to be completed in the spring of 2007. The CTA provides one and a half million rides on an average weekday. While every effort is made to keep service running on schedule, problems arise from time to time. If service is delayed, it's important to know what you should do and what the CTA is doing to get back on track. All you need is a little basic training. The CTA's goal is to provide uninterrupted service to customers, but on occasion, problems arise that cause delays in service. Aside from working to get service back to normal, the CTA is equally concerned with providing information to its customers during a disruption so they know what to expect and can adjust their travel plans. The CTA strives to get information to customers before they arrive at a station or bus stop, but also requires employees on the system to inform customers of delays and alternate service options. So that our customers can have an idea of uh, how much of a delay they may uh, encounter, as well as uh, provide them with any options that they may have uh, in order to take other means of getting to their destination. When service disruptions occur, employees are expected to alert customers and keep them informed. Our employees encounter customers at every step of the trip, as they're walking into a station, as they're waiting on a platform, as they're sitting on a train. And at each one of those stages, people need information if the service is not normal, because a lot of people have choices. The staff at the CTA's control center is responsible for making announcements on the public address system on the station platforms. In most cases, customers understand that delays in service may occur from time to time, and when provided with timely information, are able to decide for themselves how to adjust their travel plans. Because if a train's not running, there's almost certainly a bus that would be available. Or if one train line has a delay, there is another train line that might serve almost as well. In some situations, the CTA may provide buses to shuttle rail customers to points where they can easily access other bus or train routes. In cases where service will be impacted by maintenance or construction, the CTA provides advance notice to customers by posting customer alerts in train stations and on train cars and at bus stops and on buses on routes that will be affected so customers may plan accordingly. The CTA also provides service information to local media to get the word to customers before they head out the door and posts travel information on its website at www.transitchicago.com. And this year, the CTA plans to add customized electronic service alerts to its continuing efforts to keep customers informed. Another way to find out what is happening on the CTA system is by calling the customer service hotline at 1-888-YOUR-CTA. Customer service representatives will have the most recent service information, and the hotline is also where you can provide valuable feedback to the CTA about how they're doing and keeping you informed. Whether it's a PA system that is not working or no announcements on the train, the CTA wants to hear from you. If there's an employee who's not doing what we've instructed in terms of alerting the customers, if we know the time and the place, uh, the run number of the train or the badge number of the employee, any identifying information, then we can take corrective action and make sure that person is retrained if necessary because there's just nothing more important than keeping our customers informed. CTA employees are dedicated to keeping trains and buses running smoothly and on time. But when disruptions do occur, keeping customers informed is a top priority, one that the CTA is working to improve upon every day. We would ask that the customers communicate with us on what their experiences are so that uh, we can use that information to make the service even better. The next time you take the Purple Line to Evanston's Main Street Station, you may notice a difference in your ride. The trains are able to get you here a bit faster and more smoothly, thanks to the completion of a major capital improvement project. It's another way the CTA is investing in the system to keep your commute on track. 
The CTA is always working to improve its system for customers. Capital improvements are critical in keeping customers satisfied and attracting new customers to the system. In fact, the CTA's five-year capital budget currently includes $1.8 billion worth of upgrades for both the bus and rail systems. However, a substantial amount of the CTA's capital improvement program remains unfunded. As the legislature looks at capital funding for transit, the CTA will conduct a thorough and systemic analysis for the additional funding it needs to reach a state of good repair. One of the CTA's most recent capital improvements was along the Purple Line in downtown Evanston. The replacement of the viaduct at the Main Street Station is the latest example of the CTA's effort to keep the system in good repair. As with many capital improvement projects, this was no easy task. The existing 95-year-old bridge had to be replaced by a new steel structure. The old concrete viaduct was fragile and trains had to limit their speed as slow as 25 miles per hour to pass over it. Replacing the bridge allows the CTA to get rid of the slow zone and provide faster, more efficient service for Purple Line customers. The CTA worked to minimize the impact to service during the viaduct replacement project. Service on the Purple Line experienced one weekend closure while the new structure was rolled into place. The CTA provided bus service to customers to replace Purple Line service for the weekend. We did all the prep work ahead of time, putting in our deep foundations uh, weeks before, and then we built the bridge on the street, picked it up on big uh, rollers, and uh, drove it basically in, and then set the whole bridge down on one weekend. Put all the track work back in and had it opened up by Monday morning rush hour. CTA crews took advantage of the temporary closure to perform other maintenance and repairs at several stations along the track, but a lot of planning was required. It took probably about a year of planning to get everything in place. And then during the weekend when we had the whole line shut down, uh, our maintenance crews went in and we did track work. Uh, we did some bridge work up on the north end of the line. We also had a contractor come in and put in a fiber optic uh, duct line for us. We did a, a lot of work when we had the trains all shut down on that weekend. With the new viaduct in place, trains are now able to maintain their speed between Main Street and Dempster Station. And customers are getting where they need to go more efficiently. The CTA is planning to replace another viaduct in Evanston in 2006. There are 46 similar concrete viaducts throughout the CTA system, and the majority have been in place for decades. We have a lot of old uh, bridges in the CTA, and we have some of their 1892 that were built and we're still running on them, so our structures are built pretty, pretty well that'll last very long. While capital improvements are ongoing at the CTA, a close eye is kept on the entire system structure to determine future projects. We have inspections all the time on all of our stations and our structure, our track, and we have a complete inventory of what we have and the conditions of all the inventory of everything that's there. The CTA's goal is to keep service running safely and on time for customers, and capital improvements play a big part in making that happen. CTA strives to provide service that is on time, clean, safe, and friendly. And behind the scenes, CTA employees work hard every day to meet that goal. Employees like Paris Bradley and Anthony Martin, two of the CTA's 2005 rodeo winners. When it's time to put CTA trains into service, there are CTA employees specially trained to handle the job. It's an important role that can't be overlooked. That's the job of the CTA switchmen. Anthony Martin and Paris Bradley are among the CTA switchmen who work hard every day to help keep the CTA's train service flowing smoothly. And they've proven themselves to be the best at what they do. That's because they're the 2005 champions in the switchman competition at the CTA's annual rodeo. They're both outgoing and have a great deal of knowledge for the job. A lot of knowledge between the both of them. What makes them special is they work good together, and I think they showed that at the rodeo. Switchmen work in rail yards and shops throughout the CTA system. They are a key line of defense when it comes to keeping the trains safe, 
and that is something they take very seriously. I know once the operator has that train that I did my job, that I know that train is safe, it's clean, and I brought it out in a timely fashion. Because switchmen often work around live track, they are highly trained, and safety is always priority number one. We make sure that everything is prepared on this train so that when we take it up for service, the passengers get a safe and clean ride. Not only do switchmen make sure that trains are fully operational, they are also the ones that take trains apart and put them together, adding cars to make longer trains for rush periods and removing them to make shorter trains for off-peak hours. To accomplish these tasks, switchmen must know all the ins and outs of operating a train. We need someone that's energetic, of course, and have total knowledge of the trains. As far as troubleshooting, the entire nomenclature, knowing exactly what to expect on a defective train because they would be required to move it. During the rodeo competition, the teams of switchmen were challenged to beat out the clock and each other. And when they placed first in the competition, both Anthony and Paris were surprised. Under time circumstances, somebody could be two seconds, one second faster than you, so you got to think on your feet. Everything you've been taught, everything you've learned on that one day, expect, expect to do everything. So you just come prepared. This is the second time that Anthony has won first place in the rodeo, and he's already setting his sights on competing next year and winning again. For Paris, this is her first win in the CTA's rodeo competition, and she's enjoying the sweet taste of success. But now she's moving up in the CTA to become a universal rail supervisor, which means she'll be ineligible to compete in 2006. So I'm going to officially retire and cannot be dethroned. <laughs> So congratulations to Anthony and Paris on taking first place in the rodeo and on a job well done at the CTA. Just steps from the Red Line's 47th Street Station, you're able to board a bus that will take you through a collection of interesting neighborhoods on Chicago's South Side. There's a lot to experience, so plan on spending most of the day along our destination, the 47th Street Bus Route. If you haven't been on 47th Street lately, you're in for a surprise. The CTA's 47th Street Bus runs along 47th Street from the lakefront all the way to Cicero Avenue. And along the route, you'll find an eclectic mix of people, discover some of Chicago's rich history, and stumble upon some new and exciting venues for entertainment, shopping, and eating. Beginning on the west end of the route and one block south of 47th Street at Lawndale Avenue, you'll find a chocolate lover's paradise at the world's finest chocolate factory. As one of the world's largest producers of fine milk chocolate products, this state-of-the-art facility has the capacity to produce over 200,000 pounds of chocolate a day. We've been in Chicago since the late 1920s. We started as a cocoa company and we now produce chocolate bars mostly for the fundraising market. Many people have sold our bars. Um, we have a what I call a sales force of diminutive millions that sell our bars every year. This may be where they make chocolate, but there's a place nearby to buy it it's an outlet store, and the prices are just as good as the products they sell. To get there, just hop on the 47th Street bus, head west to Pulaski, and walk four blocks north. You can find some real deals here, so stop in and stock up. Over the years, over $3 billion have been raised by organizations to help uh, worthy causes. So every year we track those bars and recognize the amount of dollars that we help people raise. That's a key part of who we are and what we do, so we're, we're quite proud of that. Step back on the 47th Street bus, head east toward Ashland Avenue, and you'll come across an interesting area that's rooted in history. It's the heart of the Back of the Yards neighborhood. 47th Street is the southern border of this community, best known as the site of Chicago's historic Union Stockyards. The Union Stockyards thrived for a century before closing in 1971. Today, you'll find a bustling business district along 47th Street, largely dominated by small mom-and-pop stores and restaurants. If you enjoy Mexican food, take your pick of any number of food establishments along this stretch of the route. 
Continue to make your way east and you'll pass by the red and green lines 47th Street stations. Keep going and you'll be able to explore a neighborhood that's making a huge comeback, Bronzeville. From the 1930s to the early 50s, this area was the heartbeat of what was known as the Black Metropolis. African Americans migrating from the South found a home here, and in no time it became a mecca for entertainment. The Regal Theater and the Savoy Ballroom were among the area's biggest attractions. Of all of the venues for music in the United States, there may be no area more important than Bronzeville in general and 47th Street particularly. Today, Bronzeville is experiencing a renaissance. This stretch of 47th Street has been dubbed the Blues District, and anchoring it, the new Harold Washington Cultural Center at 47th and King Drive. The Harold Washington Cultural Center is primarily an educational venue with uh, entertainment perspectives. We utilize performing arts and technology to deter at-risk behavior in youth ages 7 to 17. In addition to shows in the 1,000-seat theater, visitors can take full advantage of classes in this state-of-the-art facility in everything from computers to music. There's even a curriculum planned for youngsters in video production. All of our shows are open to the public. All of our classes are open to the public. We are a 501c3 nonprofit owned facility. And so all the things that we do is here for the community. Be sure to cross the street and check out this one of a kind place. The Afrocentric bookstore sells titles from a huge array of African American authors. If you're looking for that hard to find African American or African or Caribbean inspired book or author, you can find it here, and if I don't have it, we'll search to get it for you. Check out the children's section upstairs. And while here, keep a lookout. You may stumble on a book signing by your favorite author. Afrocentric Bookstore has played host to many notable writers, like Terry McMillan, Michael Jordan's mom Dolores, and Colin Powell. The Afrocentric Bookstore is just one of many places to discover on your journey along 47th Street. So just hop on board the 47th Street bus, sit back, and enjoy everything that 47th Street and the CTA has to offer. Near the end of the 47th Street bus route, CTA customers can step off the bus and into the world of art at the Little Black Pearl Workshop. It's our last stop. If you dream it, you can make it at the Little Black Pearl Workshop. The philosophy and mission is to teach the profitable connection between art and entrepreneurship and art and business. After 10 years as a leading arts education organization in Chicago, Little Black Pearl celebrated with a move to its new home in the Kenwood, Oakland community, a 40,000 square foot facility on 47th Street at Greenwood Avenue. Here you'll see young creative minds at work. I'm making the candle holder. I'll say this is the neatest thing I've made so far. Little Black Pearl also offers special workshops for adults, does commission work, and through its new first floor retail store, sells the kids custom pieces at great prices. There's nothing like being able to create something from nothing. And so that's the beauty of this place. They get to start with the raw material and, you know, build something that really is tangible and uh, to see other people really appreciate it. So be sure to stop in and experience the magic of Little Black Pearl Workshop. We'll tell you more about Little Black Pearl Workshop next month as we begin another journey around Chicagoland on the CTA. I'm Dale Rivera. See you in February on Connections. For more information about the CTA or to use the RTA's trip planner, visit our website at www.transitchicago.com or for customer service matters, call 1-888-YOUR-CTA. For travel information, call the RTA at 836-7000 from anywhere in the Chicago area.